Welcome to Orbital Dynamics. In the next part, I'm going to teach you Kepler's equation that enables you to determine the position of an orbiting satellite for a given time or the time for a given position. Before I do that, however, I want to review some more trigonometry that I'll need for the derivations. Here's Kepler's equation. Looks pretty simple, doesn't it? The derivation is anything but simple. I'll take you through it step by step in the next part. This is a position vector with length r. R is the radius of the purple circle. The position vector forms an angle theta with the x-axis. Here's the representation of that in polar coordinates. The conversion to rectangular coordinates works like this. Here's the x component of the position vector, and here's the y component. That defines the point x comma y. The cosine of the angle theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The length of the adjacent side is x, the length of the hypotenuse is r. The cosine of theta is x over r. Likewise, the sine of theta is y over r, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. We can describe the x component as f cosine theta. That's the length from the origin to the point on the x-axis. Likewise, we can describe the y component as r sine theta. That's the length from the origin to the point on the y-axis. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. We can substitute r cosine theta for x and r sine theta for y. That gives us r squared equals r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared. We can factor out r squared on the right-hand side and then divide both sides of the equation by r squared. 1 equals cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. The cosine squared and sine squared notation is equivalent to this. The tangent is defined as the opposite over adjacent, that's y over x. We can substitute r sine theta for y and r cosine theta for x. r over r equals 1. Tan theta reduces to sine theta over cosine theta. In the derivation of Kepler's equation, I need formulas for the cosine and sine of the sum of two angles. Let's start with a unit circle. That's a circle with radius 1. Let's draw two position vectors such that one forms an angle of alpha from the x-axis and the other forms an angle beta from the first position vector. The angle formed by the second position vector is alpha plus beta. We want to know the sine of alpha plus beta and the cosine of alpha plus beta. The x component of the first position vector is x sub alpha. x sub alpha is the cosine of alpha. There's no r term because the radius of this circle equals 1. The length of the x component is this line segment. The y component is y sub alpha. Its length is sine alpha. That's this line segment here. Here's the x component of the second position vector. It's equal to the cosine of alpha plus beta. And here's the y component of the second position vector. It's equal to sine of alpha plus beta. If all we wanted was the value of the cosine of alpha plus beta and the value of the sine of alpha plus beta, we simply add the angles and then look up the cosine and sine. What we're after, however, is a formula that uses cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine alpha, and sine beta that equates to the cosine of alpha plus beta and the sine of alpha plus beta. In order to solve this, we'll draw some perpendicular lines. First, we'll draw a line here, then here, and here. You'll see why this is useful later. Let's label some of these points. We'll call the origin A. The intersection of the second vector and the unit circle will be B. This point will be C. This point will be D. This point will be E. And this point will be F. We've set up some similar angles. Since this line shown in red is parallel to the x-axis, this angle equals alpha. This angle also equals alpha. The line segment BE is perpendicular to AE. Likewise, DE is perpendicular to BD. The line segments forming both angles are perpendicular, perpendicular to each other, hence the two angles are equal. BA is this line segment in yellow. BC is this line segment in purple. The sine of alpha plus beta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's BC over AB. That's this length here since the radius of the circle AB equals 1. BD is this line segment in red. EF is this line segment in green. The length of BC equals BD plus EF. 
we can substitute BD plus EF for BC. The sine of alpha plus beta is BD plus EF over AB. Let's split that sum into separate fractions. Now let's compute BD over AB and EF over AB. Line segment BE is shown here in blue. The length of BD over AB equals BD over BE plus BE over AB. All we did here was introduce BE in both the numerator and denominator. BD over BE is the adjacent over hypotenuse for this angle alpha. It's equal to cosine alpha. BE over AB is the opposite over hypotenuse for this angle beta. It's equal to sine beta. BD over BE is cosine alpha. BE over AB is sine beta. This line segment AE in magenta, this is line segment AE in magenta. EF over AB equals EF over AE times AE over AB. All we did here was introduce AE in both the numerator and denominator. EF over AE is the opposite over hypotenuse for this angle alpha. It's the sine of alpha. AE over AB is the adjacent over hypotenuse for this angle beta. That's the cosine of beta. EF over AE is sine alpha. AE over AB is cosine beta. BD over AB is cosine alpha times sine beta. EF over AB is sine alpha times cosine beta. And this is the trigonometric identity for the sum of two angles. Sine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha times sine beta plus sine alpha times cosine beta. The derivation for cosine is similar. AB is this line segment in yellow. AC is the purple line. The cosine of alpha plus beta is AC over AB. That's the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That's equivalent to this. AF is the line segment in red. DE is in green. The length of AC is equal to AF minus DE. We can substitute that into our cosine equation. And then we can separate the difference into separate fractions. Now let's compute AF over AB and DE over AB. AE is the magenta line. The length of AF over AB equals AF over AE times AE over AB. All we did here was introduce AE in both the numerator and denominator. AF over A is the cosine of this angle alpha. AE over AB is the cosine of this angle beta. AF over AE is cosine alpha. AE over AB is cosine beta. BE is this blue line. The length of DE over AB equals DE over BE plus times BE over AB. DE over BE is the sine of this angle alpha. BE over AB is the sine of this angle beta. DE over BE is sine alpha. BE over AB is cosine beta. AF over AB is cosine alpha cosine beta. DE over AB is sine alpha sine beta. This is the trigonometric identity for the cosine of the sum of two angles. Cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. Here's what I want you to take away from this part, these trig identities. X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. The tangent of theta equals the sine theta over cosine theta. Cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared equals one, or Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Those are both equivalent. The sine of alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha times sine beta plus sine alpha times cosine beta. Cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta.